Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to do a, another calculation. We'll, we will be looking at uh, calculating the effects of indirect taxes on stakeholders and welfare. On an exam, you would be given a graph with specific uh, quantities on the x and specific prices along the y axis. And with your ruler, uh, you would be drawing a line to uh, measure bases and heights for triangles and rectangles to calculate consumer and producer surplus, uh, consumer expenditure, total revenue, etc. So you got to be able to identify um, where these areas are within a given graph. Uh, and also on an exam, you'd probably be asked to draw the second supply curve, the supply curve with the tax. So using your ruler, you would show um, the supply curve shifting up right, by the amount of the tax or shifting to the left, again, by the amount of the, of the tax. And with your ruler, you would draw that and have that illustrated. So then you could show where the new equilibrium is, in this case, where S2 equals D1 at point B, and with your ruler drawing where the new equilibrium price is, in this case at P5, and new equilibrium quantities is at, in this case, at Q1. So let's go ahead and uh, just do some simple calculations uh, in the free market before we see the impact of the government intervention. And, and again, on an exam, you'd be asked to do this. So they might ask you, what is the free market equilibrium price? All right, so we're looking at where S1 equals D1 and the free market equilibrium price, all right, price equilibrium would be achieved at P4 where S1 equals D1 at P4 and the equilibrium quantity equal to um, Q2 in this case, all right? That's where S1 equals Q2, where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded, all right? Easy enough. Next, we need to calculate where is the consumer and producer uh, surplus in the free market, all right? So again, looking at the free market, let's quick note. Right, looking at the free market, how about the consumer surplus? So we're going to remember that the consumer surplus is this triangular area, right? And thus it is equal to areas A, B, C, D in this particular graph. So let's make a note of that. Here is A plus B plus C plus D, and that will be equal to the height multiplied by the base. So in this case, price of P6 minus price of P4, which is the height, multiplied by the quantity, Q2 minus zero, which is the same as Q2, and all of that divided by two. So that would give us this triangular area, which would be the consumer surplus. Moving on, how about the producer surplus in the free market? All right, so the producer surplus, again, we're gonna follow our supply curve up to the free market equilibrium price, right? And it'll become this triangular area, the level of kind of profit for the firm, their cost of production versus the price they charge or the revenue they earn. So the producer surplus is equal to areas E plus F plus G plus H plus I. And that is equal to the height, which in this case is P4 minus P1 multiplied by the quantity, again, Q2 minus zero, which is Q2, divided by two, and that gives us that surface area. Great. How about consumer expenditure and total revenue and perhaps social surplus? Let's look at social surplus uh, since we're already talking about consumer and producer surplus. So the free market level of social surplus, that is equal to the consumer surplus plus the producer surplus which is equal to all of these areas. Areas A plus B plus C plus D 
plus E plus F plus G plus H plus I, which would equal this entire height of P6 minus P1 multiplied by the quantity, again in this case Q2 minus 0 or Q2, and all of that divided by 2, and we would get the social surplus. Moving right along, how about consumer expenditure and total revenue? Consumer expenditure in the free market, how much are consumers spending in the free market on this particular good? So we're going to look at consumer expenditure. And that's going to be equal to the price that consumers are paying in the free market, which is at P4. P4 multiplied by the quantity they're consuming, multiplied by Q2. All right? Again, it is this surface area. And we're going to see that this is, again, the same to total revenue. So with that, we can look at producer total revenue. which is equal to price times quantity. Let me just clean that up. So we know that the formula for total revenue is equal to price times quantity. So in this case, the original total revenue in the free market, total revenue one, I'll call it, is equal to P4 times Q2, all right? P4 multiplied by Q2, all right? Total revenue, again, same as the consumer expenditure. Great. So now the government steps in and they apply per unit tax, in this case in the market for mobile devices, and that's going to cause the supply curve to shift in by the amount of the tax, a parallel shift, assuming a per unit tax. All right, and now we can talk about the, the changes. So let's look at the uh, impact of the indirect tax. All right, the indirect tax outcome. All right, and what is the impact on consumer surplus? Consumer surplus is equal to area A. All right, consumers are paying a higher price. Price has risen from P4 to P5. Thus, you follow the demand curve up to the new price the higher price with the tax, and this becomes the consumer surplus. So consumer surplus equal to area A is now the height of P6 minus P5 multiplied by the quantity, which now is at Q1, All right? Q1 minus zero, which is Q1, and all of that divided by two, and that will give us the surface area of this triangle. Great. How about the producer surplus? Let's look at the impact on the firms. Producer surplus with the indirect tax is equal to areas E, F, G, A, oops, sorry, H and I. I. Let me correct myself. So here we can see that it is this triangular area. Firms are receiving a lower price. It's fallen from P4 to P3. They follow their cost of production up to that lower price at P3, and that becomes their producer surplus, similar to their kind of producer or their profit margin. Okay? So that's equal to areas H plus I. All right, H plus I. So that area is the height, which is P3 minus P1 multiplied by the quantity, which in this case is at Q1, Q1 minus zero, which is still Q1. And that gives us the surface area of that triangle. That is the producer surplus. Great. So we have um, highlighted or calculated this consumer surplus. We have calculated this producer surplus. So now we can be asked to calculate the level of tax revenue generated by this. So next, let's look at the impact on 
government tax revenue. So before, the government earned no tax revenue, and now they're gaining tax revenue with the indirect tax. So that would be equal to tax revenue equal to areas B plus C plus E plus F, which is equal to uh, this height, which is the size of the tax, multiplied by the number of units sold. So here we have P5 minus P3 multiplied by the number of units, which again here is Q1 minus 0 or Q1. That is that rectangular area, which we will highlight in purple. So here is the tax revenue that we just calculated. What's left? All that's left is the welfare loss. And then we are done with these calculations. So with the indirect tax, the welfare loss, which we'll color in green, is this triangular area right here, D and G. All right, and um, we're going to make a note. The welfare loss is equal to areas D plus G which would be equal to this height, which is the tax, P5 minus P3, this height multiplied by this base, which is Q2 minus Q1, and then all of that divided by two. Fantastic. We have calculated all of these areas. Last but not least, let's look at the consumer expenditure and the total revenue. And we will have essentially calculated what would be expected of us. And then on an exam, they might ask you to compare the consumer and producer surplus before and after the tax, etc. So we're almost there. Consumer expenditure with the indirect tax. Consumer expenditure. So now consumers are paying a higher price. So consumer expenditure is going to be a price of P5 multiplied by the quantity which is at Q1. All right, originally it was P4 times Q2. Now it's changed to P5 times Q1. That's the level of spending. And what about producer total revenue? All right, producer total revenue. All right, in this case, this will be the second total revenue. The original one was with the free market equal to the price received of P3 multiplied by the quantity being supplied at Q1. Remember before it was P4 times Q2. Now total revenue for the firm has been reduced to P3 times Q1. And that's essentially it. We have uh, shown how to calculate this. Uh, if you would be asked to do this on an exam, if you have any questions, don't forget uh, to comment and uh, don't forget to subscribe and to like.